Manchester City Arsenal was another high level clash between two teams with very similar, very modern philosophies. And as I said in my analysis of City Bayern, these tend to be very chess like encounters. Both teams are content with patient possession at the back. Both teams are trying to contain the other with some kind of hybrid pressing and there's a lot of back and forth as each team has a go playing through the lines which can often feel like a stalemate. However, that stalemate is exactly the game that Pep Guardiola and Manchester City wanted. Why? Because his team had a secret weapon that Arsenal did not and Pep's tactics are gradually becoming more radical to exploit that. That secret weapon is verticality or you could call it directness. And I'm going to show you why it's so important to Pep and why it might just have decided the Premier League title race. When you look closely at City's possession, you realise something felt a little weird. Yes, they were typically patient in possession, probing Arsenal's mid-block, but when they broke the lines, they seemed a little reluctant to press that advantage. Having made up territory, you would expect them to try and pin Arsenal in their own half, attacking the box and then counter-pressing. That's what we usually associate with control from top teams. But instead, City are very comfortable just going backwards, then standing still with the ball and waiting for Arsenal to get them. But why? Well, because City aren't actually concerned with pinning Arsenal back. Precisely the opposite. They want to bait them out. They want Arsenal's forwards to commit themselves and for the back line to step up the pitch so they can then exploit the space that's left in behind. Which is why City's best chances in this game didn't come from final third possession, but as a result of Arsenal's own pressure. Here, for example, you see City are much deeper, and Arsenal have committed to a man-to-man -man press, which City are going to use to their advantage. First, they use Bernardo Silva to drop deep and unlock Kyle Walker as the third man. This has the effect of dragging out the left back Zinchenko and seven Arsenal players are committed to this press, leaving just three defenders behind Haaland. In other words, there's a lot of space available for City to exploit, and with a direct route into Haaland, City become very vertical very quickly. This is a glimpse of the latest development in Guardiola's footballing universe, and it's his answer to the intense and organised pressure that teams tend to apply nowadays. It still allows City to control games, just instead of controlling it by pushing a team back, they're actually controlling it by baiting a team out. The key to this is striking a balance between possession, which City have been mastering for years, and verticality. And City know exactly when to retain and recycle, and when to hit the space that emerges through their opponents over committing the press. That might only happen a handful of times in a game, but City are patient enough to wait for the right opportunity. Maybe it comes from individual brilliance, like Grealish single-handedly breaking the lines, but often it is in transition. So here Gundogan intercepts, and City hit the space through De Bruyne and Haaland. As you'd expect, an important part of the strategy is being very good in transition, because those are situations where space emerges naturally, an error from your opponent, or winning a second ball, and it's no surprise that City are primed to exploit these situations. When they emerge, that's when they're at their most direct. It's no coincidence then that two of their four goals against Arsenal came in transition. Of course, it's easy for me to sit here and say, just be good in transition, but Pep and the City hierarchy have been building this squad exactly for this purpose, and there's no greater example than Erling Haaland, whose signing represented a shift from Pep towards this kind of game plan. What makes Haaland so valuable is that he's a double threat. On the one hand, an elite target man, which allows City to go very direct against the press, but he's also an incredible runner, with the pace to get in behind in transition. You pair that with Kevin De Bruyne, who has the quality to feed him, but also drive into that space himself, and you get a duo who are absolutely devastating at exploiting space quickly. Without these profiles, you just can't play this way. And that was partly the problem for Arsenal, who weren't quite as ruthless when the space appeared. I should point out, of course, that City's defensive structure is just as, if not more, important to their success, and that's a whole other discussion for another day. But purely in terms of chance creation, none of City's four goals came through what you'd usually associate with Guardiola. No long passing moves or intricate combinations. Instead, they score from a long ball, two transitions, and a free kick. Don't let anyone tell you that Pep isn't a pragmatist. Really, in these big games, you could go as far as to say that City want to win the big moments, but want as little as possible to happen in between them. 
They achieve that, of course, through well-drilled possession, but now, more importantly, is their ability to manipulate and exploit the opposition shape even when they're getting pressed. We usually associate attacking space with counter-attacking teams, teams who give up possession, but this City team is doing it with the ball, sort of getting the best of both worlds. This is also the same principle behind Brighton's build-up play under De Zerbi, so I'm sure I'll be talking more about it on this channel, but for now, that was just a snapshot of the ways Guardiola is continuing to evolve the City team. If you're an up-and-coming footballer and you want to be ready for the demands of this new footballing age, I highly recommend checking out Be Your Best, which is football training in virtual reality, and it's made by a team of football and technology experts from Norway to help improve your cognitive performance. The main skill that Be Your Best trains is your scanning, but you can also train vision, decision making and memory. To do so, you'll play through over 800 scenarios recreated from real top level games, like this one featuring Modric. You'll be playing from a player's perspective as you complete scenarios and receive feedback on your performance. Now, Be Your Best is used by both amateur and professional players all over the world, with Arsenal star Martin Odegaard even using it during his injury period. And the results are backed by science. A recent nine-week study saw players improve their scan rate by 28% thanks to the training. So you can get 20% off your first month or off your first year by using code PUREST20 at checkout. Just go to beyourbest.com to get started. The link will also be in the description. And you'll not only be improving your game, but supporting the channel as well. So everybody wins. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. It's been a really crazy period for me outside of YouTube recently, uh, so content has been quite thin, but I'm hoping to get back on it now and give you guys a lot more to look forward to. So do subscribe if you don't wanna miss any more tactical analyses. We've got some more great ones coming up and I hope to see you then. Take it easy.